At this point on our app, we have a list of pictures to choose from, but although we can tap on them, nothing happens. Our next goal is to design a new screen that we've shown when the user taps any row. We're going to make it show the selected picture full screen, and it will slide in automatically when a picture is tapped. This task can be split into two smaller tasks. First, we need to create some new code that will host this detail screen. Second, we need to draw the user interface for the screen inside Interface Builder. Let's start with the easy bit, creating new code to host the detail screen. Back in Xcode, I'll go to the File menu and choose New, then File and a window full of options will appear. From this list, make sure iOS is selected, then go to Coco Touch Class and click Next. You'll be asked to name the screen and also tell iOS what it should build on. I'll call this thing Detail View Controller. For the name and for subclass of, I'll enter UI View Controller. Please make sure this box also create zip file is not checked. Then click next to create the new file. That's the first job done. We have a new file that will contain code for the detail screen. The second task takes a little bit more thinking. I right, to go back to main.storyboard and you'll see our existing two view controllers there. That's a nav controller on the left and a table view controller on the right. We're going to add a new view controller, a new screen, which will be our detail screen. First, go to the object library and look for view controller. You'll see a few options in there. The one you want is just called view controller. Drag it out into the space on the right of your table view controller, then let go. You could place it anywhere really, but it's nice to arrange your screen so they flow logically from left to right. Now, if you look in your document outline, you'll see a second view controller scene has appeared, one for the table view and one for the detail view. If you're not sure which is which, just click in the new screen. And it should select the correct scene in the document outline over here. When we created our table view cell previously, we gave it an identifier so we could load it in code. We need to do the same thing for this new screen. When you selected it a moment ago, it should have cho chosen view in the document outline. Above that will be View Controller, with a yellow icon next to it. Please click on that to select the whole View Controller now. To give this View Controller a name, we want to go to the Identity Inspector. Over here, choosing this thing. Now enter Detail, where it says Storyboard ID. While you're there, please click the arrow next to the class box and select Detail View Controller to attach this screen to the code in DetailViewController.Swift. Now for the interesting part. We want this screen to display the user's selected image nice and big, so we need to use a new user interface component called UI Image View. As you'll be able to tell from the name, this is part of UIKit, hence the UI in the name, and it's responsible for viewing images, which is perfect. If we look in the object library again, for image, you'll see image view. So we'll click and drag that from the object library into your new detail view controller. Then let go. Now drag its edges so it fills the entire view controller. So drag it from this corner up to the top left and this corner down to the bottom right. You should see these blue lines snap in place when they reach the very edges. Go right to the edge like that. This image view has no content right now. So it's filled with a pale gray background and the word UI image view over top of it. We won't be assigning any content to it right now though. That's something we'll do when the program runs. Instead, we need to tell the image view how to size itself for our screen, whether that's iPhone or iPad. Now this might sound strange at first. After all, you just place it to fill the view controller and it has the same size as the view controller, so that should be it, right? Well, not quite. Think about it. There are lots of iOS devices your app might run on, all with different sizes. So how should the image you respond when it's running on a 10s Max or even an iPad? iOS has an answer for this, and it's a brilliant answer that in many ways works like magic to do what you want. It's called Auto Layout. It lets you define rules for how your view should be laid out, and it automatically makes sure those rules are followed. But, and this is a big but, it has two rules of its own, 
both of which must be followed by you. First, your layout rules must be complete. That is, you can't specify only an X position for something, you must also specify a Y position. If it's been a while since you left school, X is positioned from the left of the screen and Y is positioned from top of the screen. Second, your layout rules must not conflict. That is, you can't specify that a view must be 10 points away from the left edge, 10 points away from the right edge, and 1,000 points wide. You know, smaller iPhone screens, only 300 something points wide, so your layout is mathematically impossible. Auto layout will try to recover from these problems by breaking rules until it finds a solution, but the end result is never what you want. You can create auto layout rules, known as constraints, entirely inside Interface Builder, and it will warn you if you aren't following these two rules. It will even help you correct any mistakes by suggesting fixes. However, the fixes it suggests might be correct, but they might not be, so tread carefully. We're going to create four constraints now, one each for the top, bottom, left, and right of the image view, so it expands to fill the detail view controller regardless of its size. There are lots of ways of adding auto layout constraints, but the easiest way right now is to select the image view, then go to the editor menu and choose resolve auto layout issues, and then select reset to suggested constraints. Now you'll see that option listed twice in the menu because there are two subtly different options. In this instance though, it doesn't matter which you choose. So I'll choose the first one. Visually, your layout will look pretty much identical once you've added the constraints, but there are some subtle differences. First, the line around your image view is now a light blue color, which is Interface Builder's way of showing you that the image view has correct auto layout definitions. Second, in the document outline pane, you'll see a new entry for constraints beneath the image view. All four constraints that were added are hidden under that constraints item and you can expand it to view them individually if you're curious. With the constraints added, there's one more thing to do here before we're finished with Interface Builder, and that's to connect our new image view to some code. You see, having the image view here inside the view isn't enough. If we actually want to use the image view inside code, we need to create a property that's attached to the layout. This property is just like the pictures array we made previously, but it has a little bit more interesting Swift syntax we need to cover. Even more cunningly, it's created using a really bizarre piece of user interface design that will send your brain for a loop if you've used other graphical IDEs. Let's dive in and explain on the way. Xcode has a special display layout called the Assistant Editor, which split your Xcode editor in two, the view you had before on top and a related view at the bottom. In this case, it's going to show us Interface Builder at the top and the code for the Detail View Controller below. Xcode decides what code to show based on what item selected in Interface Builder, so make sure the image view is selected and choose View, Assistant Editor, Show Assistant Editor. If your view has these panes left and right, rather top and bottom, you can change that by going to View, Assistant Editor, and changing on right to on bottom. You should now see the Detail View Controller in Interface Builder in this top pane, and in the other pane, the source code for DetailViewController.swift. Xcode knows to load DetailViewController.swift because he's changed the class for this screen to be DetailViewController just after he changed its storyboard ID. Now for the bizarre piece of UI. What I want you to do is this. First, make sure your image view is selected. Second, scroll down so you can see above view did load, this space right here, line 12 for me. Now, hold down the control key on your keyboard, then press down your mouse or trackpad button on the image view and drag it away while holding down the control key. And this blue line will appear. As you move your mouse cursor, this line will stretch out in any direction you drag around. I want you to drag this thing into the source code just above view to load, below class detail view controller. For me, that's just above line 12 here. And a blue line will appear saying insert outlet or outlet connection. When you see that, 
let go of both control and your mouse button, and a balloon should appear like this one, with several fields to fill in. Connection, object, name, type, and below the word strong. By default, the option should be Outlook for Connections, Detail Image View, or Detail View Controller, sorry, for Object, Nothing for Name, UI Image View for Type, and Strong for Storage. If you see Weak for Storage, that's fine, just change it to be Strong. And Xcode will remember your choice from now on. Before I continue, I do want to say that many more experienced iOS developers might argue with me on this. They'll say, no, 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 don't use strong, use weak. The simple truth is, Apple use both. There is no difference realistically. If they'd like to argue with me, they're welcome to do it on Twitter. Go ahead and choose strong and ignore the haters. For the name field, I'd like you to enter image view. And when you're done with that, press connect, and it will write a line of code in there where you dragged the thing. It should say, IB Outlet var image view, UI image view, then implicitly unwrapped optional. To the left, in the gutter where your line numbers normally are, you'll see a circle with another circle inside. If you hover over that, it will light up the image view in Interface Builder, telling us what that code's connected to in the storyboard. So we control dragged straight from Interface Builder into our Swift file, and Xcode wrote a line of code for us as a result. There are some new things in here, particularly at IB Outlet. This attribute tells Xcode there's a connection between this line of code and something in Interface Builder. It does nothing to the language other than that. It's just there for Interface Builder. Then it creates a new property using var, calls it image view, and declares it as a type of UI image view exclamation mark, an implicitly unwrapped optional. This means, of course, that the image view might be there or might not be there. But in this case, we're definitely certain it will be there by the time we want to use it. Now, if you still haven't fully grasped optionals, you might not be terribly sure why it's required. Well, this code might actually help a little bit. You see, when our detail view controller is being created, its view hasn't been loaded yet. It's just some code running on the CPU. When the basic stuff's been done, like allocating enough memory to hold it all, for example, iOS goes ahead and loads the layout from the storyboard, then connects all the outlets from the storyboard to our code. So, when the detail view controller is first made, the UI image view doesn't exist because it hasn't been created yet. But we still need to have some space for it in memory. At this point, the property is nil, just some empty memory. But when the view gets loaded and the outlet's connected, the UI image view will get pointed to a real UI image view, not to nil, so we can start using it. In short, it starts life as nil, then gets set to a value before we use it, so we're certain it won't ever be nil by the time we want to use it, a textbook case of implicitly unwrapped optionals. If you still don't understand implicitly unwrapped optionals or indeed optionals at all, that's perfectly fine, just keep on going and they'll become clear over time. That's our detail screen complete. We're done with IB for now, and can return to code. This also means we're done with the assistant editor, so we can go back to the full screen editor by going to the view menu, choosing standard editor, then show standard editor. You can switch between these quickly, by the way, with these buttons up here. A standard here, and assistant over here. 